Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petit. Welcome to my channel. Are you someone who loves jewelry but often struggles to keep it organized and easy to access? Then look no further than the Agnes jewelry pouch. This pattern is a game changer for anyone who wants to keep their jewelry safe, secure and easy to find. With its multiple compartments and clear vinyl pockets, the Agnes Jewelry Pouch is the ultimate solution for all your jewelry storage needs. You'll never have to worry about tangled necklaces, misplaced earrings or lost rings again. The pattern comes in two sizes, making it perfect for both at-home storage and on-the-go use. The small size is great for slipping into your purse or gym bag, while the larger size is ideal for storing all your jewelry at home. In this video, I will walk you through how to make this small version of the Agnes jewelry pouch, but first, let me show you the pouch up close. Agnes jewelry pouch features a zipper pocket, which provides a secure place to store your most valuable pieces. The zipper closure ensures that your jewelry stays safe and secure, even when you are on the move. In addition to the zipper pocket, this pouch also features two slip pockets under the flaps. These pockets provide additional storage space for your bracelets and other small jewelry items. The edges are finished with bias binding, which in my opinion is a small detail that makes this pouch stand out. What sets the Agnes jewelry pouch pattern apart is its customizability. The detachable pockets, ring holders and earring holders make it easy to swap and change between the pouches. This means you can create a pouch that's perfectly tailored to your jewelry collection with its practical and stylish design, will help you keep your precious pieces safe, secure and easy to access. So don't wait any longer, get your hands on the pattern today and start creating your very own customized jewelry storage solution. I will leave the link to the pattern and all supplies I use in this tutorial in the description box below. And now let's make our jewelry pouch. To make your jewelry pouches, you will need different types of fabric. I'm using the corduroy, uh, very lightweight corduroy fabric on the external portion of my bag. This is the part that is visible once the pouch is closed. Then I'm going to mix this beautiful printed cotton both as the external and some of the lining pieces on the interior portion of my pouch. This is going to be the main fabric inside my pouches. So I'm not going to do the color blocking uh, today. I'm using the same fabric on all the pieces and I'm going to use the same fabric as the lining of my flaps as well. To add a little bit of color to my pouches, I'm going to use this pink fabric as an accent. I'm going to use it on the trims, on the detachable pockets, on the connector part and also on the ring holder. This pink waterproof fabric I'm going to use on the remaining lining pieces. This will be the main lining for my small pouch because it really isn't visible and I will also use it as the lining parts of the zipper and slip pockets. Next you will need small piece of non-fraying fabric such as cork, vinyl or faux leather. This fabric is used on the holders so you have the necklace holder, the earring holder and also on each end of your ring holder. And lastly, you will need clear vinyl. I recommend 12 to 16 gauge vinyl um, or any vinyl that is sturdy enough but not too thick. You want the vinyl to have a little bit of structure, especially on the detachable clear vinyl pockets because you don't want them too flimsy. For the small and large zipper pockets on your larger pouch, you can use lightweight vinyl if you wish. Depending on the type of fabric you are going to use, you may have to interface the back of your fabric with some woven interfacing. I highly recommend fusing woven interfacing to fabrics that um, tend to fray a lot 
uh, maybe are stretchy and you don't want to uh, have that stretch and also very lightweight fabric such as quilting cotton using stabilizer is optional and again it really depends on the type of fabric the weight the structure of your fabric so if you are using something lightweight stretchy or drapey i highly recommend adding lightweight to medium weight stabilizer such as fusible fleece this is my preferred uh, stabilizer for this project because it is flexible and you can close your pouch without any problem a foam stabilizer that is a little bit more thicker than fusible fleece just like this one is also good because it is flexible but try to avoid heavyweight sturdy stabilizers that typically you would use on the base of your back or a backpack however when you are using more sturdy fabrics such as canvas or maybe wax cotton like i used on this pouch uh, you may want to skip the stabilizer altogether. There are many places, especially behind the uh, snap connectors, where you want to stabilize your fabric. So I highly recommend using Decoville Light for this purpose. However, if you don't have Decoville Light, you can use something similar. To make the small Agnes jewelry pouch, you will need to cut one main panel from your external fabric and one from your lining fabric. You'll also need one trim from your external fabric, cut two flaps from external fabric and two from your lining fabric, one zipper pocket from external fabric and one from your lining fabric, and lastly one slip pocket from external fabric and your lining fabric. You will need number five zipper. I prefer to use continuous zipper because it is much easier to stitch through the coil without breaking the needle. However, if you want to use ready-made zippers, you can find the measurements of the individual uh, zipper in the sewing instruction in the supply list. If you are using continuous zipper, you will also need three zipper pulls and a lighter is very good to have on hand so you can burn the edges of your zipper to stop them from fraying you will need multi-surface glue i'm using beacon 3-in-1 glue today double-sided tape i prefer to use narrower tape this one is five millimeters or quarter of an inch wide you will need eight sets of the 12 millimeters or half an inch metal spring press snaps single fold bias binding in two sizes as you can see i'm using a self-made bias binding so it matches my fabric you will need a handful of fiber fill for the ring holder your favorite marking tools but make sure at least one of them is erasable because we are going to use it on the right side of the fabric you'll need a ruler to take some measurements you will also need some clips or pins to hold your fabric in place, some snips, scissors, and also a hand press or other tools to install your press snaps. Take your external and lining flap and place them right sides together. Just like that, line them up and then you can clip them in place. Then you're going to repeat that on the other set. When you are ready, you're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch around except for the top straight edge using one centimeter seam allowance. If you have a pinking shirt, you can trim the seam allowance by half Otherwise, use your regular scissors and cut a little V-shapes around the curve to ensure that once you turn the flaps right side out, the seam lays nice and flat. Next, you're going to turn the flap right side out and press it flat. So we're going to turn it through the top opening, right side out, just like that. I like to use my corner shaper to push those corners out and then just smooth the seam to give me nice curved seam. Go ahead and press your seams with an iron.
just like that. When you are ready, you're going to take this to the machine and we're going to top stitch around the finished seams. Next, we're going to install the female part of the snap. So you should already have the placement marked on the lining portion. So you can just simply punch the hole through the fabric. I'm using a hole puncher for that, but you can use an owl or your seam ripper. And then you can install your snaps. I have a separate video tutorial to show you how to install the metal spring press snaps using a hand press. You can find the link to this tutorial in the description box below. Next you can take the external slip and zipper pockets and we're going to install the male portion of the snaps. So again you can use your hole puncher to just punch the hole for the fabric and now I'm going to install the male part of the snap. Here we go! Next, you're going to take your slip pocket, both the external and lining pieces, and we're going to sew them together. So you're going to place them with right side facing each other, just like that, line them up, and we can clip it around the left side edge. Make sure this is the edge that is closer to your snaps. So when you are ready, you're going to take this to the machine, and we're going to sew the seam using one centimeter seam allowance. Next, you can take this to the pressing station, open the panels, open the seam allowance, press it flat, place the wrong sides together and press the seam flat. But since I'm using waterproof fabric for my lining, I'm going to just finger press my seam. Then when you are ready, you can take this to the machine and we're going to top stitch along that finished seam. Alright, if you have any excess fabric, just trim it down. Alright, if you haven't done so already, make sure you draw your stitching line. So use a marking pen or marking tool that is erasable. Then you're going to take your main lining panel and place your pocket on top. We're going to line up the top, bottom and the right side edges. So line it up, make sure your pocket is nice and straight and you can clip it in place. When you are ready, you can take this to the machine and baste your pocket in place. Then you can trim the corners. So you want to follow the lining piece and cut the corners to the same shape. Next, we're going to make two separate compartments by stitching along the line. Next, you can take your flaps and simply snap it in place, just like that. Then you can take this to the machine and making sure the edges are straight. You want to make sure your uh, pocket flap is nice and straight. You're going to baste along the straight edges. Next, you can take your external zipper pocket and your zipper. So if you are using continuous zipper, you can cut the zipper to the same height as your pocket or cut it a little bit longer in case if you have difficulty uh, later on. So I'm going to just cut it slightly longer. I'm going to burn the edges to prevent them from fraying. If you find it easier, add your zipper pull now to your zipper. Otherwise, keep the zipper pull aside for later. 
So next you're going to place the zipper facing down on top of the zipper pocket. So if you have a zipper pull already, make sure the zipper pull is around the top edge. So around here, once the zipper, when the zipper is closed, line it up along the right side edge of your pocket and you can clip those two pieces together. If you want, you can take this to the machine and baste the zipper in place. Otherwise, take your lining piece and with right side facing down, so this is the right side of the fabric, place it on top, line it up, and then you can just move those clips to hold everything in place. Here we go. Next, we can take this to the machine and we're going to sew the seam using seven millimeter seam allowance. Next, you can take this to the pressing station, flip the panels away from the zipper, just like that. And you can just press that seam flat. But again, because I'm using waterproof fabric, I'm just going to press it with my fingers. And then when you are ready, you're going to take this to the machine once again, and we're going to top stitch along that finished seam. Now you're going to take your double-sided tape and we're going to apply it on the wrong side of our zipper. So just around that edge of the zipper inside the seam allowance. So don't go over the seam allowance. Here we go. Next, we're going to measure seven millimeters from the trim placement uh, notches. So I hope you can see I have a notch here, notch here, and then notch here and here. That's the place of our trim. So we want to make sure we add the zipper pocket in the correct place. So you need to measure seven millimeters from this and this notch and then you can draw a line. So we're going to measure it towards the slip pockets. And then you can just draw a line. Next, you can take your zipper pocket, remove the plastic cover from your tape, and we're going to line up the edge of the zipper along that line that we have just drawn. So make sure the bottom and top edges are aligned and simply place your pocket on top. Press it with your fingers so the double-sided tape sticks to your fabric. This is one of the reasons why I like to keep my zipper pull aside for later because this way I can align that edge very nice and precise. So once you have that nice and neat, you can baste the pocket in place, but don't baste over the zipper because we need to insert that zipper pull later on. Now I'm going to insert the zipper pull. So I'm going to do that from the bottom. If you worry about losing your zipper pull, baste the ends of your zipper. Then you can trim the excess. So trim the excess uh, zipper and also trim the zipper pocket around so it matches your lining. Next, you're going to take your trim and we're going to fold the longer edges towards the center, just like that. So I'm going to use the edge of the Decoville light as a guideline. Otherwise, if you didn't use one, you can simply draw a line in the center and then you can fold your edges towards the center. Next, you're going to take your double-sided tape and apply it to the back of the trim, somewhere in the center. Next, you're going to peel the plastic cover and we're going to align the trim on top in the center of our panel. So where you had those 
two notches and the other two are just behind the zipper you which you can't really see use those notches that you can see and simply align it in the center so you want to make sure the top and bottom edges are lined up and simply make it nice and straight just like that press it with your fingers then we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to top stitch along those two folded edges Once you've got that stitch, then you can install two male portions of the snap along the trim. So again, you should have the position of the marked on the back of your lining piece. So punch a hole for the fabric. And you can install your snaps. Here we go. Now you can take your external main panel and place the lining and the external pieces with wrong sides together. Line them up and then you can clip those two pieces in place. All right, when you are ready, take this to the machine and baste all around using five millimeter seam allowance. Once you have that basted, double check if your edges are nice and clean so they are all aligned perfectly. Otherwise, just trim it down so it looks nice and straight. Then you're going to take one inch or 2.5 centimeters wide bias binding, unfold one edge, and we're going to line it up around the entire panel. So make sure you leave a long tail at the beginning and the end and clip it in place. When you get to the corners, to ensure the bias binding lays nice and flat when it's finished, you don't want to stretch it out. So make sure you just place it on top, clip it in place. It's best to even ease some bias binding in then to stretch it out. You want your bias binding to lay nice and flat against the panel. Now you can take this to the machine and stitch the bias binding in place, but leave at least 10 centimeters gap between the first and last stitch. Then we'll join those two ends together. Depending on the fabric and stabilizer that you used, the thickness of your seam may be different. So if you used um, spongy, uh, foam stabilizer for example the thickness of your pouch will be bigger uh, if you omitted the stabilizer altogether the thickness of your pouch will be uh, smaller so you may have to adjust the seam allowance uh, when stitching your binding in place I usually use between 7 to 10 millimeter seam allowance Once this is in place, you can join those two ends together and finish that seam. So I have a separate video tutorial showing you different methods of uh, joining the ends of bias binding. So check it out if you need help. Once you have finished sewing that seam, you're going to flip the bias binding to the other side.
then you're going to fold it to cover the raw edge you can clip that in place and then you're going to stitch along the edge of the binding all around so to make sure you have a consistent seam allowance on both sides always make sure that the edge of your bias binding is just beyond the stitching line and just keep it consistent throughout If you enjoyed this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more sewing patterns and tutorials in the following video i will show you how to make single and double detachable pockets ring holders and earring holders so you can customize your agnes jewelry pouch see you next time stay crafty friends